UK has no right whatsoever to come to your continent and tell you what company you should keep. That's the first and most important thing. The UK's Minister for Armed Forces, Right Honourable James MP, has revealed reasons why friendship of UK Armed Forces and Nigeria Armed Forces are renewed regularly. He said it is because the two countries have worked together to solve challenges of maritime insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea and terrorism in the Lake Charge Basin. He promised that UK Armed Forces will continue to do so as this week connect to training and others. Well, first of all, it is a really important point to make that just because the British Army, the Royal Navy, the Royal Air Force were the Army Navy Air Force that was the original reference point for the Nigerian Armed Forces, that doesn't mean any automatic relationship thereafter. The reason that our armed forces remain so close is because that friendship has been renewed again and again and again since the point of independence because we have worked together to address challenges like maritime insecurity in the Gulf of Guinea or terrorism uh, in the Lake Chad Basin and we will continue to do so. Now, a lot of that is connected to training together and sharing tactics and techniques for how to deal with the problems of the day, but also it's to do with a shared inventory. It's to do with operating the same kit, like, for example, the Husky armored vehicle, which was a vehicle that was used very successfully uh, by the British Armed Forces in Afghanistan, is designed to be used in counterinsurgency type operations such as um, is needed to address some of the security challenges in this part of the world. And so you know, that combination of training together, developing capability together, added to our shared history is what makes the relationship between the UK and Nigerian armed forces so strong. And I have every confidence it will continue to be strong for many decades to come. Now, what the UK realises is that the UK alone can't deal with the challenges that exist and nor should a European Navy or the Brazilian Navy or the US Navy be coming down here and thinking that it is the answer. What ECOWAS has is a very well structured and well organised response to the maritime security challenge that exists here. All of the ECOWAS countries contribute to that effort very well. And so when European navies come down, really what we need to do is to fit ourselves in to your maritime security construct and be a part of your solution to insecurity and piracy in the Gulf of Guinea, not just coming down here and doing our own thing. And that's what the Royal Navy took great pride in doing when it was here last year. And it will continue to do each year for as long as it takes to uh, achieve security in the Gulf of Guinea. I think the reality is that the, uh, the opportunity to improve our intelligence sharing and uh, to um, uh, share capability that is in surveillance and reconnaissance is a really important way that um, the UK and others from beyond the region can support countries in the region that are trying to provide their own solution to the region's problems. The fact that that intelligence sharing relationship is so immature is, is a concern, but it's also an opportunity because it's uh, an opportunity for um, British military intelligence, which I think is increasingly trusted around the world as a consequence of uh, the way that we've reported the daily intelligence situation in Ukraine. You know, I'm very keen that British military intelligence makes available its insight to our partners uh, around the world to help them understand what we know about their, re their region. And it's a discussion that comes up in all of the meetings, really. People wanting to know what we know. And as much as possible, we will do our best to share what we know so that you can know it too. Speaking on his conversation 
during his visit to Nigeria, Right Honorable James says, It's my second visit to Nigeria since being appointed the Minister of State for the Armed Forces. It's great to be back in a country where the UK Armed Forces and the Nigerian Armed Forces enjoy such a long uh, and strong relationship. Um, clearly, the conversations that I've been having uh, so far today and will continue to have during the rest of my visit focus on the security challenges in the region and way, the way the UK and Nigeria with other partners in West Africa can work together to solve them. However, Honorable James disclosed that UK has no right whatsoever to come to your continent to tell you what company you should keep. He said this while reacting to Ukraine-Russia war. He said Russia is aggressive by violating rule-based international order. He then calls on international community to respond. The UK has no right whatsoever to come to your continent and tell you what company you should keep. That's the first and most important thing. Um, but I don't mind sharing with you that I think that Russia is uh, an aggressor that has violated the rules-based international order, that has taken the sovereign territory of its neighbor without provocation. I think it is right that the international community has responded as overwhelmingly as it has. And as you note in your question, the consequence of those sanctions and the consequence of the donations that countries around the world have made to the Ukrainian military effort have combined to ensure that over a year into the conflict, Putin has achieved none of the strategic aims that he started with. It is also a great cause of concern to me and the British government that Russian proxies are increasingly active on your continent. Now, what reassures me enormously is I have met remarkably few people in government in any countries on this continent who think that the arrival of Russian mercenaries is in any way a good thing. Um, these are a private military company of ungoverned, ill-trained, ill-disciplined mercenaries who cause nothing but trouble everywhere that they go and who plunder the wealth of the countries that they operate in for their own uh, for their own wealth. That is not, in my opinion, what any of the countries that have flirted with Wagner um, can afford, nor is it remotely in their interests. And so, you know, look, it is, for, it is for countries on this continent to make their own decision. There's nothing that, you know, I have no right to tell you what you should or should not do. But I will advise you that I think that um, Wagner is a very dangerous organization that does not have the interests of the countries that it operates in at heart. And the real problem is that for a very large number of countries in the West, the presence of Wagner increasingly is a barrier to our continued support in those countries. And so I think that you know the... Um, the decision that needs to be made is, does a country want the continued support, engagement, and, uh, and military capacity that comes from a partnership with the US, the UK, France, and our allies? Or does it want to put its future in the hands of a bunch of failed Russian corporals? And in my experience, um, you know, for everything that we get wrong in the world, the partnership that we offer, I would argue quite confidently, is a better proposition. Bemiga Olamiko, GTV Africa.